What goes into an always connected PC? Windows 10 on ARM, right? Actually, there's a lot more to that, and today I'm gonna to tell you about its history and why it's not really new either, and why it's not all about ARM. Stay tuned. All right, so in late 2016, Microsoft announced on stage its always connected PC initiative. It was the idea behind it was Windows 10 on ARM was really the big deal there. As for the first time, well, not really, unless you count Windows RT, but for the first time, we're gonna have true Windows 10 on ARM, and it's gonna be able to run Win32 applications without having to be specially recompiled. So that was kind of the big deal. And since then, Windows 10 on ARM has been associated with always connected PCs. And on this channel, that's what we've talked a lot about. However, it should be pointed out that in May 2017, Intel came out and said they're gonna support eSIM technology. And this was gonna be part of Microsoft's always connected PC initiative. And then AMD and Qualcomm came out in December 2017 and said, hey, we're teaming up as well to basically take on Intel in this area. And so Intel, AMD, and Qualcomm are all now part of always connected. Some people made this sound like, well, Microsoft didn't trust Qualcomm and was bringing Intel and AMD into the picture, but that's not really the case. In fact, the term always connected is not really a new concept for Microsoft. So going back to Windows 8, there was a thing called Connected Standby, which was then renamed to Instant Go in 8.1, and then there was Modern Standby for Windows 10, and now we have Always Connected. Now, all these things are related by the fact that it's this concept of a PC that is always on, but not always on. And so it's about power savings, right? The idea behind like an iPad tablet where you can always leave it powered on or your smartphone, but doesn't need to be shut off in order to save battery life. Now, Intel has struggled a lot with this problem and Microsoft's been trying to solve it for a long time. In fact, if you're a really big fan of Windows, you may remember going back to Vista over a decade ago, a thing called Sideshow. It was a secondary display that ran on top of a laptop. And the idea behind it was you could check the notification and check your latest emails without having to open up the laptop and connect to your network. So Microsoft's been trying to figure this out for a long time. Intel's been getting better with it. So going back to Windows 8, you could do things like stay connected to a network while the laptop was in standby. Later on, that became disconnected. So you can have a disconnected version of that where it wasn't connected to the internet, but you could still reach things like Cortana. And it's been evolving ever since. Now, I would say that Intel is still not nearly as good as Qualcomm. There is still a significant difference here. And so equating the two is not really fair. Qualcomm, you can literally leave on in a standby state for weeks or even months and hit that button, it'll turn on instantly. Whereas Intel devices still eventually need to go to sleep. And you can check this on your laptop pretty easily. In fact, on any laptop, if you type in CMD in command and then type in power config slash A, you can see the states that your laptop supports. If it supports connected standby, you'll see the network setting there. And you'll see that now my X1 Carbon, which has LTE built in. You can also see it on the Surface Pro with LTE. And of course, any device running Windows 10 and ARM. But other laptops like my Huawei MateBook X do not support the state because there's no LTE connection. So it goes into a permanent standby. My point here is that this isn't really a new concept. So Always Connected is just the next iteration, the next evolution of it, specifically bringing on Windows 10 on ARM. Now as to why Microsoft is actually pushing this idea and there was a big announcement besides the Qualcomm support, it's this next evolution of where the workplace is going. And you can read all this. It was written in a white paper recently called Accelerating the Move to the Cloud with Always Connected Computing. In this paper, Microsoft details how a lot of companies are moving towards the idea of an LTE network. They're moving all their systems to cloud-based networks. And in order to fully leverage that, you need laptops and tablets and these devices that are always connected to a network. LTE gets you that. They also mentioned the fact that LTE networks have been dropping in price and becoming more widely available. In fact, there's this new idea that you can actually set up private LTE networks that are just for your workplace. Then there's the idea of IoT, the Internet of Things, which won't rely on Wi-Fi. If you're flying a drone around, you don't really need Wi-Fi so much as LTE networks, which reach further and are more reliable than standard Wi-Fi networks, which can be expensive to both maintain and deploy. 
So anyway, go read that paper as it really explains why Microsoft is pushing always connected PC. While there is the consumer angle, it's more about the idea of users who need to be always connected to the internet and companies who are connecting more to a cloud-based network system and the future that it entails. But in the end, always connected PC is not just ARM. So think of it as Intel, and we should see AMD Ryzen processors running with Qualcomm X16 modems coming to the market as well. So it's gonna be really all the companies involved, and that's really exciting. I still think Qualcomm-based systems will be better than Intel for battery life and on and size and thinness, but Intel definitely plays a role here as well, as we've seen with Surface Pro and soon to be Surface Go. So there's a quick look into the history of always connected PC and why it's not really new. Now leave me a comment below and tell me what you think. If you like this video as always, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.